There's one right here. I have a probably a ton on my computer I can show you. Like I loved shooting her. I would tell people like her and Ellington were my favorite people to shoot from that time period because they both completely existed normally in front of the camera. So as a photographer, you're just like, okay, the thing that you saw originally that made you want to shoot their photo, they just keep doing it. They don't even change, you know? And it's so nice to have that. And she's just like so cool looking and everything she did was just rad. Super fun to shoot. I guess most of the photos were just of me wasted or something. I think one time I might have woken up to him taking a picture of me too, like when I was sleeping or something. <laughs> For like three years of my life, I hung out with Ed. I stayed at his house for like three months or something while we were filming Jump Off a Building. Jump off a building? Damn! And that was the click. I mean, Carrie gets Bam, Maldonado, Alyssa doing it, spray paint jump off a building on their boards. Like, they were fucking like 100 toy. And it was like, that was so cool to see like these people get behind this company. So how did Toy Machine change from Welcome to Hell to Jump Off a Building? The pro team changed, like Donnie was gone, Jamie was gone, Muska quit, you know? So it was like Brian and Ed were the pros. But we just went about, you know, our business as usual and skated. We did 30 demos in 33 days, that kind of thing. You know, we did the same grueling U.S. tour that we always did with Toy Machine or Tomieto. We gained, you know, Carrie Getz. Chris Sen and Bam, and she loved those guys right away. I think having Chad and Jamie gone, it felt a little more like our project, our baby, so it was really fun. Ed just wanted to be more team oriented, you know, whereas with Jamie, with Welcome to Hell, he had a vision, and that's what he went for, you know. And, you know, jump off a building was just kind of like, all right, you know, what do you think? Pretty much had everybody at it in their own parts and stuff too, so that was really cool. Everyone was instrumental in picking their music. We were still at that stage where you didn't have to get licenses or anything. Jazz Shopman, she picked. That one's real popular for like the jukebox at the bar, you know? And I remember every time that would come on, I'd be like, I'm skating to this, you know? <laughs> All I gotta do is compile three minutes of footage, <laughs> which I couldn't even do. I always wanted to get stuff. You know what I mean? But I could never set out to like have four minutes and at this part it's going to do this. If I was there and there was a camera, I would try to get a trick or... I mean, sometimes I'll be like, I want to do this and I'll go do it. But I don't know if I didn't allow pressure on me or if I just didn't succumb to the pressure or if I was blowing it. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> was there ever like times when you guys would show up at like spots at big rails and stuff and then she couldn't really skate or she get bummed on that? I don't think she would get bummed. She would just be like, I don't need to jump down that. Like, you know, she just did what she wanted. We would look out, like, for everybody on the team. Like, you know, we'd go to a big gap for Maldonado, and he would skate it, and we would leave. And then we would go to a, a courtyard with ledges, and then we would all skate, and Alyssa would get something. So we always went to ledge spots because Carrie loved them, I, myself, Maldonado. So I think we went to enough of a variety of spots for her to for her to not feel like she had to jump down some 14. I think she was comfortable with that, you know. Sometimes Alyssa would have admirers, like kids would actually come up to her and be like, you know, please marry me and stuff. And I just came across this uh, this bit of ephemera I saved. So a kid came up to Alyssa and gave her this, it's Alyssa's love ballad. I'll read it to you. I meet you through skate videos. You always wear the smoothest clothes. Your voice would make me crash my ship into the rocks. When I see you skate, I give you mad props. I read you interview in Big Brother. I would love to have dinner with you and your mother. I hate to watch you in videos when you fall. I long to skate with you or just to go to the mall. I would like it if your clothes fit, but still I think you don't quit. 
Good luck on the travels. I hope everything goes your way. I'm sure it will. I have no doubt or concerns. And I cannot lie, you are the coolest girl and super fly. P.S. Love me tender. Love, Kevin. Fort Forest Bay, Wixon, Missouri. Call me collect. I feel like a bodyguard, you know? Nobody had ever seen a girl that skated super upright, you know, and with such finesse. I don't know, I mean, I think everybody at some point or another, like, probably had a crush on Alyssa just because they'd wish that it was realistic to have a girlfriend that was that cool, that was like that down for skating and that was just that down to like hang out. And over time, she started becoming more girly. She started embracing more of a girl side started dating people and stuff. I mean, I remember the first time I saw her in a swimsuit, you know, I'd, I'd, she'd been on the team for ages and I don't know if she used to swim in shorts and a t-shirt or what. I'd forgotten she was a girl with like boobs and stuff and it was really interesting to see. I, I tried to like not look. It was fun for me to see her like come out of this shell because living with a bunch of dude skaters, like she didn't need to dress up, you know, she just needed her TSA jeans and her etnies and all that, and she looks really hot, you know? So I'm stoked for her that she can be comfortable like that. After a jump off a building, it was a weird period. I can't blame anybody. I think it was just like a uh, <clears throat> a jumping ship, jumping a sinking ship type of thing. She's just like, what's going on? And I was just like, I think everyone quit. She's just like, I'm out too then. It was like literally like that. And I was like, all right. I don't know if somebody put it in my head it was different or I put it in my head, you know, or could I even form a thought back then? Who knows? But I decided that I wanted to quit Toy Machine. I lived in Hollywood and I was just skating with like the Baker people and they started Bootleg. And so I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And then I just rode for Bootleg. For her, it was a natural. She had a place to go. So if Toy Machine was going to be falling apart, then she could jump over there and not worry about it. So Bootleg was started as a, like a subdivision of Baker? Yeah, sure. but that lasted for like a month, I think, or something like that, and then those people had their differences. Jim and uh, Andrew had the Baker boys. That was like their little clique. So it was like Baker Boys, all right, and then Bulala came in, and it was like, you know, this whole little clique. I and mean, it was kind of like, yeah, we should do something. We should start our own company. And then Jay just being like, you know, that dude that just could like piece it all together. Like, you got money to start the company. You're that young bull right now. Like, like Drew was being that, like, that rookie pro. Like, you know, you're, everybody's about you. So we could do this. Start this company. And then, you know, maybe later on, start another one. That'll be bootleg, boom. And then that kind of like, it actually happened. Bootleg was out of NHS, so then Jay just did bootleg and like, I don't know. He would like attack the Baker team in the ads and stuff. Yeah. I like nonchalantly, but, or maybe directly, I forget. I don't remember, but. It was always at the bottom. Like yeah, it would be like, our skaters really skate or something. I don't know. But I didn't, I don't know. I was just skating. I didn't really get involved. That was my favorite video part that I had, though. That was like the best skating that I did. I did a front nose to fakie that I liked. It was like really fun going on trips with everybody. I really liked the bootleg team. We were like super good friends, you know. You so see you were on right till the end? Yeah. yeah. Maybe people weren't buying it or whatever, you know? I got like a three months paycheck, like here, to find something else to do. Because <laughs> you're not gonna do this anymore. I was scared to ask people to sponsor me because I like, I don't know, I was a different person then. You know, I couldn't like ask for things. But um, like I live with Frank, so he was like trying to get me on Antihero and I went on a trip with like him and Julian and Pablo and Timo and it was fun. Timo would call me like in the middle of the night all the time and go, you were almost on, there's just no girls on Antihero or something like that and I was like, it's cool. I just didn't ride for anybody. I waited for somebody to sponsor me. And nobody ever did until Jamie called me like a year and a half later. <laughs>